Welcome to my collection of pruning tools. Now you probably don't need all of these. If you have a normal sized garden, a few of these will do the trick for you. In this video, I'll discuss each of these tools, tell you which ones I think you should have, and which ones are just nice to have tools, and I'll give you some pointers about picking out the best quality tool for the job. The one tool that all gardeners should have is a good pruner. This happens to be my Felco, and quite honestly, any serious gardener and most nursery and horticulture professionals will have this pruner. There are some new brands on the market that are also good, but this is still the preferred tool. This is not only essential for pruning trees and shrubs, but I use this all over the garden for cutting back perennials and deadheading things. It gets used a lot and it comes with me most of the time when I'm in the garden. In fact, a lot of professionals will have a sheath carried on their belt just so it's always handy. When you're looking for one of these tools, the most important feature is the grip. It has to be comfortable. It has to fit in your hand. You're going to use it quite a bit, and it does take a fair amount of pressure to cut these pieces of wood, so you want something that feels good. Some brands come in different sizes. They come in different shaped handles. Some are even twisted. The Falcos have a nice line of different ones. Some of these are twisted. Some actually rotate. So go to a store, try it out. It's not really good buying one of these in a package. You have to get out of the package and hold it. Ask yourself, you know, does this feel comfortable? Can I do this for a couple hours and not get tired? Another feature that's very important is to get a head that you can take apart. At some point, you're going to want to do a nice thorough cleaning here. And the easiest way to do that is to take all these pieces apart, clean them separately, put it back together again, and your pruner is like new. The manufacturers that make tools that can be taken apart will be able to supply replacement parts. And at some point, you might want to replace the blade. The other things to look for is a good quality spring. This is a nice heavy duty spring, whereas these cheaper pruners I have just use a regular spring and it doesn't work nearly so well. The problem with this design is that it comes out. Now that can be a plus or a minus. If you need to replace that, it's a plus. The problem I had when I bought this, the spring was actually too small for it, and I kept losing it. It kept falling out of the pruners. So I went out and bought a replacement that was a little larger, and now it stays in quite well. The weak point of most of these pruners is this latch here. This is what keeps it closed when you're not using it. And quite honestly, even on the Felcos, this is the weak point of the whole tool. If you tighten the screw too much, it's too tight. If you loosen a bit, it's too loose. And when it's loose, as you're pruning, it sneaks its way back here and suddenly it's locked and then you gotta unlock it. This is really a pain on most pruners. I also have this set here, which Looks just like a Falco, unless you look at it closely. And it's a much cheaper pruner. Has the same kind of spring. The blade comes off. The problem is it doesn't work nearly so well. I've had to replace this screw in here. When I go in the garden, it seems like I always carry the Falcos with me. There are two types of pruners. This one here is a bypass pruner. If you look at it from the cutting end, the blade goes right by the anvil. This is very similar to a pair of scissors. The nice thing about these is that when you cut wood, only the wood on the anvil side is damaged. The other side is not damaged because the knife cuts nice and clean past the wood. The second type of pruner is an anvil type. In this case, the blade comes down and hits the middle of the bottom piece, the anvil. Because the anvil is much thicker, it actually damages the wood on both sides of the cut. Anvil pruners should never be used on green, living wood. Their only use in the garden really is cutting up old dead branches. And I'm not really sure why they even bother selling it, because you can use a bypass pruner for that just as well. When should you use pruners? Well, pruners are good up to wood, that's green, and half an inch or less. The way I remember that is that if the wood is bigger than your pinky finger, 
don't use pruners. As long as it's this side or less, go ahead and cut it. Now why do I say green wood? Green wood cuts much easier than dry wood. The tool for larger branches is this lopper, or some people call it a long-handled pruner. You notice that the head is very similar to a pruner. Most of them are bypass pruners, but the blade is much longer and it's designed for cutting larger wood. This one's good up to about an inch, maybe an inch and a half, depending on which brand you have. This is an older pruner that I have, and it illustrates the biggest problem with these pruners. Their real weakness is not the blade end, but down here in the bumper section. So these handles have some bumpers so that when you cut, the bumpers prevent the tool from having you smash your knuckles together. The problem is that those bumpers are usually made out of some kind of soft rubber material and they don't last very long. It doesn't take much work and those are gone and now you're banging your hands each time. In fact, these particular ones, I had to add a metal bracket here to act as a bumper so that I could actually use them. One day I was in the store at the end of the season and they had all their tools on sale and this was a pretty expensive lopper but it was half price and I looked at it and I thought, wow, it's got to be a good tool for that price. But I looked at the handles and I thought, wow, wooden handles, I mean, how long can they really last? I mean, these aren't very thick in here. If I start working on big branches, this thing's going to break. Well, I've had it a number of years and actually been a really good pruner. I am somewhat careful with it. I don't cut very large branches, but it's an excellent tool, much better than this other one. Loppers are really nice to have if you have more shrubs. Uh, they're not that useful on trees, but if you have shrubs, they're really nice for getting in there at the base and cutting them off. It's a very quick tool for pruning, but it does have this limitation on size. And so I don't really consider it an essential tool for most gardeners. If you have a lot of shrubs, go ahead and get yourself one. If you only have a couple of shrubs, you'll either use a smaller pruner or you'll use the saw.